Hi there, my name's Scott, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Trauma Team Racing. If this is your first time here, my name's Scott, as I said, I'm an orthopaedic surgeon based here in the United Kingdom, and I've got a keen passion for simulated racing. I also happen to have a bit of an interest in medical education, and in this video, I wanted to bring you something a little bit different and try and combine the two. Now, I've recently been looking at some of the Formula One drivers' exercise regimes and rehabilitation regimes, particularly before and after a race, and I thought, how can we apply that to what we do at home? Now, we're going to touch upon some simple shoulder anatomy and some muscle biomechanics, and also some of the latest research with regards to muscle forces and the shoulder and how they apply to steering. Using that, we're going to look at some exercises that we can simply perform at home relatively cheaply to help condition our shoulder to the best possible condition to help prepare us for when we're racing on a simulator at home. Trust me, it's all going to make sense. Class is in session. So before we get into the meat of the session, let's look at the aims of what we want to try and achieve out of this session. So firstly, I want you to all to have a decent understanding of some simple bony anatomy of the shoulder. Secondly, I then want to go on to some of the basic muscle attachments of the shoulder, particularly those involved with steering. And finally, I want to look at some basic, simple exercises that we can all complete at home using relatively cheap equipment, sometimes free, um, in order to help condition our shoulder to better prepare us for when we're driving on the simulator. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you're young or old if we're talking about this. If you're a little bit older, say 50, 60, 70 plus, the shoulder muscles can be particularly weak, so these exercises are particularly important, but I also think they're relevant for the younger generation as well. I particularly, I have a bit of a weak shoulder on my right-hand side, and I find these exercises particularly helpful for me. Um, again, it doesn't really matter if you're using a direct drive wheel, or whether you're using a Logitech G923 or a G920 or whatever, they all exert some force, and they can sometimes catch you off guard. So, this is what this is all about. Now let's look at some of the movements involved in steering. Now, somewhat counterintuitively, there's very little forces exerted on the muscles that both flex and extend the elbow, these being your biceps, brachialis, and your triceps. It all predominantly comes from the shoulder. Now, to demonstrate the movement, I'm gonna be using my trusty Fanatec V2 formula wheel, and uh, we'll look at some of the movements. So, if we hold this out in sort of a race driving position, okay, I'm then gonna turn the steering wheel to my left. By doing that, my right shoulder rotates inwards, and my left shoulder rotates outwards. If we bring this back to the other side, and I turn the wheel to the right, my left shoulder rotates inwards, and my right shoulder rotates outwards. So that the, the most, of the, most of the movement for this steering wheel comes from the shoulder, both with internal and external rotation. So in order to understand what steering involves from an anatomical point of view, we need to strip away all the skin and the muscle and the fat and the tendon and the ligament to get down to bare bone to start our journey. Now we're going to be using Arnie, my beautiful assistant, affectionately named by my father, um, to demonstrate the bony anatomy of the shoulder. Now the shoulder joint is a tremendous joint because it's a, bear with me, a multi-axial synovial ball and socket joint. Now what that essentially means is it's multi-axial, it can move in any direction and it's a ball and socket because this bone here acts like a ball and it sits in the socket of this bone here. Now the two bones articulating or joining together are the humerus and the scapula and this portion of the scapula, also called your shoulder blade, called the glenoid and they form something called the glenohumeral joint. Now let's build up on that and put some muscles on top. Now, being a surgeon, I love myself some anatomy, but don't worry, we're not going to get too technical. Here we have a simple bony diagram of the shoulder. Now, on the left-hand side, it shows the shoulder viewed from the front, and on the right-hand side, it shows the shoulder viewed from the back. This is comprised of both the humerus and the scapula, and they join a special part of the scapula called the glenoid, forming the glenohumeral joint. Now, let's add on some muscles of the rotator cuff. Now the rotator cuff is a particularly important group of muscles because these all serve to work together to stabilize the shoulder and thus allow the rotation of the shoulder we spoke about when turning the steering wheel. Now there's four muscles to consider here. We have supraspinatus, which acts to elevate the arm outwards. We have infraspinatus, which turns the arm outwards. We have teres minor, which turns the arm outwards. And finally we have subscapularis, which turns the arm 
inwards. Now, don't worry too much about the names, but the take-home message here is that they are important and must function properly to control the shoulder and stabilize it, particularly when steering a vehicle. Now, let's add another muscle on top. This is the deltoid. Now, this is a massive muscle that is involved in multiple movements of the shoulder. It serves to forwardly elevate the shoulder, otherwise known as flexion, bring your shoulder backwards, also known as extension, and bring your arm out to the side, also known as abduction. The forward elevation part is the particularly important part when you're holding the steering wheel out in front of you for long durations during a race. With all that in mind, it wouldn't be a medical video without looking at some of the science. So let's touch upon the science briefly. Now I'm going to geek out on you for just a second. For those of you that are really interested in this, I will leave a link to the scientific paper in the description below. But for those of you that don't wish to read it, I'm going to simplify it really, really easily. What they basically discovered was that the muscles mainly involved in steering were the deltoid and the two muscles of the rotator cuff, supraspinatus and infraspinatus. Now, what we're going to do, don't worry about the names, is just look at some exercises to target those particular muscle groups to help become better conditioned for when we're driving on the simulator. Now, I'll reiterate, this may seem overkill, but some of these direct drive wheelbases can kick out 25 newton meters of torque, and if you're suddenly caught by snap over steer on the Nordschleife, you could end up doing yourself an injury. So, let's move on to the next section. Exercises to help improve our steering. First, let's look at strengthening the rotator cuff. For all of these exercises, I wanted them to be easily accessible so that all you need is a resistance band. Now, these are pretty cheap to acquire on Amazon. Um, I like to use a red resistance band, or if you find that too much, you can use the lowest, which is a yellow resistance band. Now, all of these can be completed by attaching these to a door handle, but for this demonstration, I'll be completing these from my Fortress of Solitude. For all of the exercises, I would advise doing these on both sides so as to prevent any potential muscle imbalances. To start with, stand side on and put a bit of tension in the band. Keep your shoulder tucked in and your elbow tucked in and gently rotate your shoulder outwards. This is shoulder external rotation. Repeat this for a few repetitions, stop if it's uncomfortable. Now swap hands, grab the band, keep your elbow tucked in towards your body and bring the arm gently across. This is internal rotation. Now repeat this for the other shoulder. For those interested, these movements are hitting subscapularis, infraspinatus and teres minor. Now let's look at how to exercise the deltoid and supraspinatus. Remember these are the muscles primarily used in keeping the arms up and resisting those forces through your wheelbase which sometimes can get up to 25 newton meters. To do this we're going to be completing some front raises and some lateral raises using the exercise band. To start off with place the exercise band beneath your right foot. Gently raise your arm forward to approximately 90 degrees. Repeat for a few repetitions and stop if uncomfortable. This is primarily targeting the deltoid. Once complete, change position and gently start raising your arm out to the side to approximately 90 degrees. These are lateral raises and these will be targeting supraspinatus and also the deltoid. Repeat for as many repetitions as you wish and stop if it gets uncomfortable. Once this side has been complete, swap over the exercise band to the other foot and repeat the exercises. Finally, let's look at a functional exercise that simulates the action of turning a wheel. For this, you'll need a heavy book, or if you have access, a weight plate. For this demonstration, I will be using a 2.5 kilogram weight plate. For this, grip it as you would a steering wheel and gently bring your arms up. This is isolating the deltoid. Hold it here for approximately five seconds, then rotate the plate or the book to the left and hold it for five seconds. Return it to the center, and then repeat the movement for a right hand turn. Rotate it to the right, hold it for five seconds, and then return it to center. Now remember, if you feel any discomfort at any point, please stop, and all of these exercises shouldn't be performed in isolation, but as part of a balanced workout. So hopefully that all made sense, you enjoyed it, and now you're in a better position to help condition your shoulders to better prepare you for that race on the simulator, or when your direct drive wheelbase decides to try and assault you. In future videos, we're going to look at some exercises to help with the core for when we're sitting for long durations on the simulator, and also for some leg exercises for that fine pedal control when we're racing around whatever track we're racing that week. Again, if you like this content, please consider subscribing, hit that like button, and if you want to be irritated by me every time I post a video, hit the alert button. So, as always, from me and Arnie, good night, good evening, good morning. See you in the next one.